Good morning from San Francisco. I'm Ken Ben Muller. It's a pleasure to contribute to the fourth CICE. I will be speaking on endoscopic ultrasound treatment of gastric varices. My mentor, Nib Sahendra, was the first to report on endoscopic treatment of gastric varices using cyanoacrylate glue. And this was reported as a new methods in 1986. The glue is a liquid that rapidly polymerizes to form a hard substance when mixed with a ionizing medium such as blood. And this polymerization occurs within seconds. The injection is performed with the scope in retroflexion to obliterate gastric varices. The glue forms a plug that seals off the varix. If we mix the glue with lipiodol, we can see this on x-ray and we note that there is a conglomerate of varices. So what we see is the tip of the iceberg. Here on histology, you see the varix lumen obliterated with the glue plug. The glue is treated like a foreign body and is extruded. And here you can see an example of a glue plug cast that was passed. The dreaded complication of glue treatment is systemic migration or embolization. Everyone who has used glue is familiar with this risk. The glue can embolize to virtually every organ of the body, the lungs, can get into the portal vein and go to the liver, the spleen, the kidneys, and it can also go to the brain if the patient has AV shunts or a patent foramen ovale. There have been many case reports, 27 reports in this review with 11 organ infarctions and seven deaths. Now this is only what has been reported. And you'll note here the different organs that can infarct or result in infection causing complications. So how can we reduce this dreaded complication of embolization? Rafael Romero Castro from Seville, Spain came up with this approach of targeting the feeder vessel. Now to do this, we need endoscopic ultrasound to visualize the feeder vessel. And he reported in 2007 on EOS guided injection of the perforating feeding vein in gastric varices, a pilot study of five cases. The goal is to produce the maximal blood flow blockage with the least amount of glue. The same group reported on a different strategy, which is to eliminate glue entirely and just use coils. So borrowed now from the interventional radiologists, again, targeting the feeder vessel, the perforator vein with good results, but this required a large number of coils to achieve complete obliteration. Targeting the feeder vessel or implanting coils into the varix requires EUS guidance. But EUS has additional advantages over endoscopy guided treatment alone. We can confirm intravascular, intravariceal delivery. And we can use Doppler flow to confirm treatment success. But a significant practical advantage is that we are not dependent on endoscopic visualization. 
So the stomach can be full of blood or food and we are still able to execute treatment. A European multicenter trial was published in 2013 comparing EOS-guided glue treatment and EOS-guided coil treatment, both targeting only the feeder vessel. Now, all patients got a CT scan after the procedure to evaluate for lung emboli. Now, this was a retrospective non-randomized trial with some two thirds receiving glue. But what they found was lung emboli were found in nearly 50% of the patients undergoing glue treatment. Whereas in those undergoing coil treatment, no lung emboli were found. Now, what's interesting is that 18% of the patients in this coil alone group actually ended up needing glue because the coil failed to adequately obliterate the lumen. And even after giving glue in these patients, no lung emboli were found. This led me to consider whether placing a coil before glue injection might reduce and ideally eliminate the risk of, of glue embolization the coil fills and reduces flow in the varix. And the wool strands then serve as a scaffold to retain the glue at the site of injection. And in this ex vivo study, after I placed a coil and then injected glue, you can see that the glue is attached to the coil and there was no residual glue in the jar. So this led me to start a protocol of placing a coil followed immediately by glue injection. And I reported on this in 2011, so a decade ago. Here you can see such an example of a fundal varix. We puncture the varix with a 19 gauge needle. We then deploy the coil within the varix. This serves as a scaffold to retain the glue, which is immediately injected afterwards through the same needle into the varix. It's very echogenic, so we can see the lumen filling with the glue. And then in follow-up, we can see that the varices are eradicated both on EUS and on endoscopy. This video shows such an example, a very large IGV-1 fundal varix. Doppler flow shows flow. We puncture the varix with a 19 gauge needle. And then we deploy the coil. You can see the coil unraveling inside of the varix here. It's very echogenic. It's a large coil, 20 millimeters uh, in diameter. And then we follow with two milliliters of the cyanoacrylate glue. We're using the octal to cyanoacrylate, the dermabond, and here you see nine months later, the gastric fundal varices are obliterated. So let's look at the evidence now for the treatment of gastric varices. First, comparing EOS guided glue versus direct endoscopy glue injection. Second, coil plus glue versus endoscopy guided glue alone. And third, coil and glue compared to EOS-guided glue injection. Now, the first study comparing EOS-guided versus endoscopic, this was not a randomized controlled trial. This is retrospective data with historic controls. But this study found that the group undergoing EOS guidance required less glue, had lower gastro gastric variceal rebleeding rates, and lower non-gastric variceal rebleeding rates and similar adverse events. So we obviously need a randomized control trial to validate these results. We do have a small pilot randomized controlled trial comparing coil and glue versus endoscopic glue alone. This is from Brazil. 
Thrombosis, so obliteration was achieved in um, three fourths of the patients in both groups. The rate of pulmonary embolism in the EOS group was half that of the endoscopy group, so 25% versus 50%. But this did not reach statistical significance, but this is a small study. So this, I think, is likely a type two uh, error. However, it's still concerning that 25% of the patients in the coil and glue group had evidence of embolization. They did use histoacryl and butyl 2 cyanoacrylate and uh, we use the octyl uh, 2 uh, cyanoacrylate, which um, uh, I believe uh, has a lower risk of embolization. We'll discuss that in just a moment. Uh, an excellent study from Dr. Uh, Robles Miranda, and I believe he is speaking at this meeting, and he compared EOS guided coil and glue versus EOS guided coil, randomized controlled. And you can see here immediately that the group of patients with combined coil and glue had a significantly lower re-intervention and re-bleeding rate compared to only coil. So re-bleeding significantly lower in the combined group, Varix reappearance significantly lower, re-intervention free time significantly longer, and the number of patients requiring re-intervention significantly less. We just published uh, our review of patients undergoing primary prophylaxis of gastric variceal bleeding. These are patients who had not bled but had high risk factors with a mean varic size of 22, 80 patients in total. The recurrent bleed, rebleed rate or bleed rate was 7.5% of which only 2.5% had bleeding due to gastric varices. So the number needed to treat to prevent one bleed was three. And the cost, which included three endoscopy sessions was one half of that required if a patient bled and required hospitalization. Now, there are other embolization agents that the interventional radiologists use, such as gel foam, onyx, amplats, or vascular plugs, PVA. So all of these, I think, deserve to be uh, studied as potential candidates for our armamentarium. Let me conclude with a list of some of the open questions that need to be addressed in future studies. Firstly, we need a randomized controlled trial comparing EOS guided versus endoscopy guided. If we can show that EOS guided is superior, then I think this should become the new standard of care. We need studies comparing monotherapy versus hybrid therapy. So glue, versus, glue alone versus uh, coil and glue. And which glue should we use? There is the historic histoacryl, the N-butyl-2 cyanoacrylate, but we have the more slowly polymerizing glues such as the 2-octyl, the dermabond. Should we target the feeder vessel or the varix or both? And what type of surveillance protocol should patients be subject to? So again, thank you for the opportunity to contribute to the fourth CICE.